Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I'm Joe. The new tile map features provide a fast way to create a 2D environment based on isometric and hexagon grid layouts, the likes of which are seen in many games classics including the first entrance of the Diablo, Civilization, Age of Empire, and many more. In this video, we are going to explore how we can use tile map in Unity and quickly and easily create a 2D level using hexagonal shape sprite. We are also going to look at how we can navigate the player around a hexagonal environment, as well as how to manipulate some of the tiles in our level as we interact with it. Finally, we will create another tile map game object which enable covers the map with some other tiles to create a fog of war effect that you typically find in a strategy game. As our player moves around, we are able to uncover portions of the map. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below, so feel free and go ahead and check them out for yourself. Now, let's get into the video. Create a new 2D project. Currently, we have nothing in here. Stay organized by creating some folders. Then, drag and drop our tile sprites into sprites folder. I have linked all of the assets in the description below. To get started designing our level, we first need to open the tile palette window and create our palette from our hexagon tiles. If you don't have this window, don't worry, we can go to window, select 2D, tile palette. In our tile palette window, let's choose create a new palette and then rename it. In our grid type, let's select hexagon. You need to provide spots for point top and flat top styles. In this case, our tiles are point top so we will select them as hexagon type. Then press the create button, Unity pop-up window. We choose to save our palette prefab inside our newly palette folder. Let's then drag our hexagon tiles into the palette window so that we can begin laying out our scene. Tile is a brand new asset added in Unity 2018.2. Its purpose is to hold data for tile map to use as a specific cell on the grid. Tiles can be automatically generated when selecting sprites for the palette in the tile palette window. After that, let's take a look at each sprite. All of sprites are downloaded from Unity Blog. The width of each sprite is 66, and its height is 64 or 128. If you want each tile rendered perfect in each unit depending on their own sprite size, we must go to pixel per unit and set to 66. 100 pixel of unit would mean a sprite that's 100 pixels would equal to one unit in the scene. It's simply too scale to say how many pixels equal one unit. Okay, let's then create a new tile map to paint on our tiles onto by choosing create 2D object hexagonal point top tile map. Tile map allows us to quickly lay out and create 2D levels using a combination of sprites and game objects. If you don't like this layout, you can click the edit button to enter the edit mode. Then pressing X or M on my keyboard to select or move each tile. Once you finish, don't forget to click the edit button again, making sure you have exist the edit mode. Let's first make the water tile map. Select the blue tile and brush on the map. You will notice that our level looks weird. Depending on the types of tiles we use, we may need to make some adjustments to the grid size and the sorting methods. The tiles we are using for this demo has some depth details as part of the sprites so they are not a perfect shape right away. First time, I tried to change the palette Y axis to 1, but nothing happens. Let's edit our gray to make them fit together more nicely. In this case, 0.65 would be the better value. Even after adjusting our grid, we can see that when we start laying out the tiles, they don't seem to sort properly. Select the tile map and set the sort methods to individual. 
We also want to change to a custom sorting method to adjust for these extra details. Then let's open our graphic settings and select change the transparency sort mode to custom access and let's set our transparency access to 010 to sort only by the Y position of our sprites. Now we should be good to continue laying out our level. Then create another hexagonal point top tile map, land hexagonal tile map. Before get started, making sure the active tile map is land tile map. Select the dark green tile to paint again. Also making sure set the sort methods to individual. You can always make your unique color by setting on here. Then create the third hexagonal point top tile map to make some obstacles in this level. Before get started, check active tile map should be obstacle tile map. For example, we select one mountain to paint. However, the selected mountain tile is rendered behind other tiles. Due to the fact that water and the land tile map sorting order is zero. So let's try to set the obstacle tile map sorting layer order to five. Nice. Now, any tiles on obstacle tile map would render on the front of the previous two tile maps. In other words, the obstacle tiles would render on the front of the background tiles. Another problem is that our cursor cannot pinpoint the center of the mountain tile. So let's set the tile anchor to negative 0.5, 1, 0. Cool. Create the last tile map called Fog. Fog of War enables covers the map with some other tiles to create a Fog of War effect in this project. As our player moves around, they are able to uncover portions of the map. So let's give the sorting order value 10 to our Fog of War tile map. Additional, don't forget to select the individual mode. Now we can drag and drop a player sprite into the hierarchy. Reset the transform component and the sorting layer order is 7. We can snap drag our player by holding command or control button. You can change the snap settings by going edit, snap settings. Drag and drop one shadow sprite as the first child of our player. Reset its transform and the sorting layer order is 6. Then drag the main camera as the second child of the player so that our main camera can directly follow the player during gameplay. Search for Box Collider 2D component for our player game object. In here, we should manually set the collider size pretty small because once our player move from one unit to another, for example, move horizontally, we don't want to collide any adjacent obstacles in different ways like this. Additional, add rigid body 2D component and change the body type to kinematic in case of falling down by gravity. Actually, we should check useful kinematic context. Enable this setting and check the box. I will fix it later. You can choose to press them first in advance. Create one C-sharp script called player movement. Then drag and drop this C-sharp script to our player game object. Select obstacle tile map. Add a tile map collider 2D component to the obstacle tile map. This will auto-generate colliders for each individual tile based on the shape of the sprite. Go to play movement script. The first private is a vector 2 variable that is called velocity. 
we want to make sure the player can only move in any of the six possible directions and calculate the directions they need to travel. So we have another vector three variables that is called direction. Then we have one private Boolean variable that is called has moved. In update methods, we check if the velocity x value is equal to zero, the Boolean variable has moved is equal to be false. Else, if the velocity x value is not equal to zero and has moved is equal to be false. In other words, our player is moving. The Boolean variable should be true. We call the move by direction methods. This method handles the movement logic to allow us to navigate our hexagonal grid. Create a new private method called move by direction. We first check which direction in the x axis to move, as we can always move in the directions with our current hexagon type. Then we check if the player would like to move up or down. If the velocity y value is greater than zero, which means our player direction towards northwest. So we can say direction is equal to new vector 3, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We set our direction to move the player half unit left in the x axis and half unit up in the y axis. Else, if the velocity is less than zero, which means our player direction towards southwest. We set our direction to move the player half unit left in the x axis and half unit down in the y axis. Otherwise, we set our direction a whole unit to the left. In other words, we just press the keyboard to move one unit left. Else, if velocity is greater than zero, here is greater, not less than. We can use the same logic to achieve. Then we add the directions to the transform.ourPlayer. Go back to update methods. Don't forget to assign the input value to the velocity. Now if we take a look at our game, now we can move our sprites around the relative to each tile in our level. However, our player can pass over or pass through the obstacle. We use onCollision enter 2 d methods. This method is inherent from mono behavior instead of one customization method. If one collider makes contact with this object collider, we minus the directions to the transform.ourPlayer. If you don't need this collision parameter information, then you can declare onCollision enter 2 d without the parameter. Unfortunately, it doesn't work as well as expected. Check use for kinematic contacts. Enable these settings and check the box because we want to kinematic rigid body 2D to collide with all rigid body types such as our player. If we enter the play mode, we can see that our player cannot pass through the mountain and stay on the previous position. Now we can select water tile map and add the tile map collider 2D component. We can run our scene and look at a game view. This time our player cannot walk through the water. Perfect. We have another tile map game object here, which enable covers the map with some other tiles to create a fog of war effect that you typically find in a strategy game. 
As our player moves around, they are able to uncover portions of the map. Before we get started, let's import unityengine.tilemap so we can create and modify tilemap relative variables. We create a new private method called updateFork. And we have another integer variable that is called vision. In this case, we want to make it visible in the inspector. To achieve the fork of wall effect, we need to calculate the current position of the player inside tilemap grid. With this information, we can then select the JSON tiles surrounding the player's coordinates and remove them. We can see that we have a reference of the fork of wall tile map. In here, we use the wall to sale methods to get the current tile coordinates of our sprites relative to our tile map grid. You will notice that our player and the fork tile map, they have total different coordinates. This is the reason why we use wall to sale methods. Using this information, we then calculate the surrounding tiles by stepping through and offsetting our coordinates in both the X and the Y axis. As our player will be the center, we need to start with a negative offset on both X and Y axis. The vision value allows us to adjust the scale of our offset and determines how many tiles we uncover. We start by iterating through the X axis with negative the value of our vision and continue unit X is no longer less than or equal to the vision value. We then add another for loop inside of this loop, iterating through the y positions in the same way. With each x iterations, we iterate our y position the same number of times. Inside our second for loop, we use set tile methods on our fork of wall tile map. This method allows us to change the tile at any coordinates on a tile map. We are using our current player tile with an offset from our x and y values to get the locations of the tile we want to remove. By setting the second parameter in this method to known, our tile map will remove any existing tile at the selected location on the grid. This is one red line error on here because unit cannot convert vector3 type into vector3 in type. So we can directly replace the vector3 type with vector3 in type. Then replace our current player position type as well. Finally, don't forget to call this method. Each time we move our player, we call the update fork method. Save the script and switch bank. Drag and drop the fork tile map into this empty slot. If we play our game, we can now move around our map and our fog of war is removed as we explored. If we adjust their vision value, the higher this value is, the more tiles we can uncover as we move. Perfect. We can reset the main camera and add more features in this project. This is the perfect start to any great strategy game. Actually, from my perspective, in many games, we will not use the keyboard to control our player on hexagonal grid. Instead, we prefer to click the mouse to control the player movement. If you want to view more about hexagonal tile maps or others, leave the comments and let me know. Alright, this is the end of this video. This video is just one extension of the Unity Offshore video. If you are interested in learning more about how to import assets for tile mapping, advanced level buildings, and examples of other types of tiles that are supported by the tile map tool, I have linked some of our other videos on this topic in the description below. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button, turn on the post notification, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There is much more to come. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. You are the best.